Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to our miniature here is we want to prime it up and I'll just use some white primer to do that. I've also just added a few stones to the base so you can also add in some stuff to the base if you want to there. And then once we have that complete I'm going to start off here by using some dark sea blue for the skin tone. Now only seem to come in two uh, predominant colors for their skin tone and that's either usually a red or a blue so I'm deciding to go with the blue here but again it's totally up to you what you want to do. So going on the dark sea blue we want to make sure we get everywhere where we can see any of the skin showing so on the horns the face on the hands and the legs just things like that now that we have our skin tone done we're going to come in now with some alien purple it's going to be a nice contrast to that blue is going to help us stand out a little bit more so alien purple we're just going to be placing here she has a little bit of uh, uh, cloak slash uh, mantle on her we can see these nice sort of uh, sleeves popping out and I'm going to be doing just that top part as you can see sort of an undershirt there uh, in this purple color which is going to help I think add in a little bit more visual interest to the whole model okay so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in now with some cavalry brown which is a nice reddish brown color and we're going to be using that for the majority part of her armor that isn't uh, small metal plates and uh, chain mail and stuff like that so there's a lot of armor all around the place which is sort of a leather with some stitch working on it so we want to be applying the cavalry brown to those areas which is all over the model so uh, be careful when you're looking around the model i've also used some inspiration and in looking up some real uh, samurai style armor and one that really did stand out to me was a very uh, ready brownish uh, with some black trim around it so i'm going to copy that and use that as inspiration for my female only here because it's quite an interesting look and I hope it's going to come out the way I like it on the piece itself. So now we have those bits of leather armor picked out. What I'm going to be doing now is coming in with some charred brown. And with the charred brown I'm going to be using as a base color for the fur she has here, just around her waist. So you can see there's a little tuft of fur. There's also uh, a bit of fur pelt on the back as well. So don't forget to do the back of the model. And we just want to be giving it a nice overall coat being careful to not get it anywhere where we don't want it to since we're starting to move into some fiddly little areas on the miniature. Okay, so now we have the fur complete. We're going to come in now with khaki and the khaki color I'm going to be using for her nice big uh, Japanese style club she has. So uh, I want to go with a light wood with this rather than dark wood since we're already using some dark browns for a fur and some other leather working detail later on is going to be a lot of dark color so I want a nice bright color for uh, her wooden weapon to help stand out amongst the piece and khaki is going to be a good color for this a nice light wood okay so with her club painted up we're going to come in now with some stone wall gray and for the stone wall gray what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing it uh, in her uh, underclothing basically so we're going to be doing in her pants and as well as she has uh, some sleeves that are just underneath her armor as well that are slightly picking up we want to make sure we pick those out as well so being very careful to avoid painting anywhere we don't want to especially now since we're starting to get into a lot of small fiddly areas on the miniature so be best to neat up as much as we can here but of course you can always come back and tidy up since we are still in the base coating stage okay so now we have our pants picked out we're going to come in now with some necrotic flesh and for this color we're going to be placing it just on her little uh, sack or gorge she has here. I believe it's just a little sack, maybe like a coin purse or something like that um, with some mystery inside. Um, but I'm going to be using some necrotic flesh here. I didn't want to use a brown or a khaki color. I wanted to make it stand out a little bit more than that. Just make it a little bit more interesting. And necrotic flesh having sort of a greenish tint to it is going to help along with that too. Okay, so once we have that picked out, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown. And... The mahogany brown all we're going to be doing with that is we're just going to be giving a quick dry brush over her fur pouch she has around her waist so just being very careful you can see i'm using a very small dry brush to do this so um, you can also just gone back and done this after we've done the other step to make it a little bit easier on yourself but i'm also going to be using monster brown as well which is an even lighter brown again just to add a little bit more variety to the miniature again just using my 
very small dry brush to help uh, avoid some of the detail that we don't want it to be getting and we're just trying to get it onto those focused areas. Okay, now we have a fur complete. What we're going to be doing now is coming in with some Nocturna Shadow, which is a very dark green. And with this uh, Nocturna Shadow, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using it for the nice bit of uh, cloth belt she has around her waist. So being very careful to avoid anywhere we don't want this to be at this stage, since we're starting to get into those finer details again, and just making sure we just pick out that belt around her waist. So once we have her belt picked out, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some Vampire Red. And I'm going to be using it for this uh, sort of fancy scabbard she has here, I believe, or maybe some scroll. I'm, I'm not quite sure what this adornment is supposed to be on here, but it looks quite flash. And I'm going to start off with a base coat of some vampire red here for this. And then once we have that painted up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in now with some charred brown. I'm running out of using this on one small place on the miniature. And we're just going to be using it as a little bit of uh, string or rope that she's using to hold up this uh, gourd slash uh, sack uh, to her hand. So just being very careful, you can see I'm using a very fine brush to do this since the detailing is very small. So it's going to help out uh, painting that up just a little bit easier. And now we have that rope paint up. What we're going to be doing now is coming in with some gun metal. And what we're going to be doing with the gun metal is we're going to be uh, painting up all the nice little metal plates along the Japanese samurai style armor she's wearing. You see there's a lot of uh, little metal plates and chain mail and stuff along there. So we want to make sure we definitely get in there and get that. You might want to switch to a smaller brush if you need to as well. Um, but while we're doing that, we also want to make sure while we've got our gun metal out is we also want to be doing the little spikes that are on her club as well. And just the little uh, handle around there as well, just to add in that little bit of metal detailing because looking up uh, online, these uh, Japanese clubs had little metal studs on them, so it's going to help enhance it a little bit, make the weapon look a little bit more dangerous too. So don't forget to do that while you're painting up the armor bits as well. So once we have the metal all painted up, what we're going to do now is come in with some greedy gold. And the greedy gold, what we're going to be doing, I'm just going to be placing it on two small places here on the miniature. She has some nice little, uh, um, well, I'm not exactly sure what to call them, sort of... Uh, cool adornments on her some jewelry that's uh, hanging from her so i want to be making sure i paint that up as well as that little uh, scroll slash scabbard thing she has across her belt as well i'm just going to be doing just the ends of it just in the gold to help uh, accent and bring out that red color too now we have those golden pieces painted up what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some ivory and of course we're going to be doing a nice tricky part of any miniature and that's painting in the eyes uh, this uh, female only has some really nice uh, sculpted in eye detail so you could probably get away with not doing the eyes if you wanted to but I still need that eye practice I'm still trying to get those eyes how I want to look them and there's no better time than continuously doing it over and over again until I start getting better handle on the eyes and of course ivory just coming in while we're doing that too we also want to just pick out the little teeth she has on her mouth as well so don't forget to pick out those when we're doing the uh, whites of the eyes. Then once we have the whites of the eyes all painted in, we're going to come in now, of course, with some black. And all we need to do is dot in those eyes, which are extremely difficult and always take a long time. So don't be afraid if it takes more than a few attempts. I know this took me at least two attempts to get right. Uh, coming in with a very fine, sharp point brush and dotting in those eyes so they don't look crazy or wacky or uh, even just slightly off. Don't be afraid to just wait for that. Paint over the eyes again with the ivory color and then come back in with that black again until you get those pupils how you want them. So now we have those eyes complete and they're as happy as we can get them. We're going to come in now with some castle gray. And what we're going to be doing with the castle gray is all we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up that nice big stone that she's standing on. Now that big stone is actually sculpted onto the miniature itself. So you will definitely have this. Um, but it's up to you if you put a, um, some basing material around here like I have or you just have the stone itself but either way you just want to use the castle gray as a nice base color for the stone then once we have that stone uh, base coated we're going to come in now with some dirt spatter and for the dirt spatter all i'm going to be doing is placing it on all those little uh, stones i got from my driveway and just giving them an all overall base coat to look like sort of roughed up dirt but it's totally up to you want to do here if you want to make them all stone then go ahead and use the exact same color we just used previously to make the whole thing a stony area i'm just going with the sort of uh, generic sort of dirt look okay so once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some black 
and I mentioned before that uh, the Japanese samurai armor I was copying off was uh, a red armor with uh, black accents on there and I'm going to be mimicking that of course so we want to come in now with some straight black I think it's going to help uh, boost a lot of visual interest to this piece and what I'm doing is doing it around the edges where we've got these nice raised parts and all the little bits of stitching work as well we want to make sure we just brush over them with the black and you can see I'm using a very fine brush to do this and I'm just skimming over the top making sure that I'm picking out those uh, bits of stitching all around the piece so spend your time making sure you can pick out all the ones you can see everywhere on the miniature and on that armor Okay, so now we have all that stitching detail. You can see it looks a very flashy piece now. Um, but what we want to do now is come in with some ivory. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting up the Onis here in white. Uh, from most depictions I've seen of the Oni, uh, they seem to have very striking white hair. So I want to mimic that again, of course. Because it is a female Oni, so I want to try stick true to that. So using ivory is going to help with that. Okay, so now we have that hair complete. What we're going to be doing now is coming in with some blue tone ink. And we want to be using this for over the skin of our Oni to enrich that blue color. And you can see it works straight away, but I'm not using it so thick that it's changing the color entirely. You can see I'm moving it around, trying to spread it out and making sure that we can get it all into those recesses. So we've got some nice shadow working with the uh, ink itself. So once our blue ink is completely dry, what we're doing now is coming in with some red tone, which is the exact same, but of course red rather than blue and we want to be applying it over all of the armor uh, pieces that we've done in that cavalry brown and you can see this is why I went with the uh, brownish red color so I knew I was going to come over it with the uh, uh, red tone anyway which was going to enrich the redness even more so this is just going to help separate out those colors and add a lot more visual interest and make it a more outstanding piece than if we were just to go over it with a brown wash I wanted her to be sort of striking uh, in her colors. Then once that red tone is completely dry, what we're doing now is coming in with some known oil. And of course we're going to be applying this over everything that is metallic. Uh, it comes a nice uh, style to the metallic colours, so I always love placing known oil over any metallics. And of course we've got to be a little bit selective with this since it's not a big chunk of armour and it's in a lot of very small places. So if you need to, come in with a smaller brush to make sure you really cover over and get this as well as that I'm also going to be placing it just along the uh, purple mantle she has on her as well so being very selective we want to place it I'm also going to be placing it on the hair as well to add a little bit of definition into those shadows but don't be too afraid if it stains the hair completely black because we'll be coming back over in a highlighting step okay so now we have all that known oil on there and completely dry we're going to come in now with some agrax earth shade now this is basically going to be going over everywhere we have left and we haven't touched on the miniature so that's areas like the fur she has around her waist uh, her nice big club we're going to be placing it everywhere on the ground uh, on the little gourd slash sack she has here her uh, pants we want to make sure everywhere covering the ground as well including that little stone we, that she's standing on we also want to make sure we do that as well so pretty much everywhere we haven't touched yet with a wash we want to be making sure we use the agrax earth shade for that okay now with that all that agrax earth shade is completely dry we're going to come in now with some ash gray and we're going to be using the ash gray to be just giving a quick little highlight over the stone she's standing on so nice small dry brush you can see i've got here so trying to avoid dry brushing it over to the miniature itself and we're just quickly going over the edges of that slab of stone. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some ivory, and we're going to be using ivory to, of course, be uh, giving highlights to her hair, so her hair comes back across as having white hair rather than uh, very dirty white hair. We want it to look like white hair that has uh, the black shadows rather than dirty white hair. So we want to be making sure we pick out those nice strands of hair that are sculpted in with a very fine tip brush. And then once we have those strands of hair picked out, what we'll be doing now is coming back in with that dark pale blue, and we're going to be, of course, using it for highlights on her skin. So we want to be hitting those areas that would naturally hit the sun, so we want to get a little bit on her nose, her eyebrows, the tips of her horns, a little bit of her chin, and on the high points of the fingers, so of course just all those areas where it looks like the sun would naturally hit is where you just want to be just 
putting a little bit of that uh, blue color. And then once we have those highlights done, we're going to come back in with our stone wall gray. And we're going to be, of course, placing that as highlights as well. But this time, again, it's just over the pants, and we're just getting those high points in the folds that you can clearly see uh, sculpted into that miniature. So it's nice and easy to pick out with those highlights. Then with her pants all highlighted up, what we're going to be doing now is coming on with some shining silver. And, of course, we're going to be doing the highlights again, this time just on the metal, and it's in those nice raised edges. You can see I've got a very fine tip brush for this and I'm just dotting it on to those raised points so it looks like the uh, armor is sort of getting a little bit of shine from the sun and it's sort of glimmering off a little bit it's a very subtle effect but it's going to help out in the long term and then once we have those high points picked out we're going to come back in again with some alien purple and we're doing the exact same thing just hitting those high points so a nice uh, edge along her shoulder here you can see is a very good high point to pick out with this and just along the little fold she has there as well. There's got to be some nice high points for this purple. And once we have that done, we also want to be doing our high points of the armor itself and the nice red part. So again, we want to come back in with the cavalry brown. And we're just, of course, hitting the edges. You can see here, now I've got to be very careful here because we want to avoid uh, accidentally scraping over those areas where the stitching is and we have to come back in with that black. So being very careful using that very fine tip brush and of course just hitting those corners and those edges and getting it everywhere we want to to have that sun striking down looked effect. And with all that complete, we're finally finished painting up our female Oni from Reaper Miniatures. And you can see that uh, by coming in with some of the legends on looking up the designs of Japanese samurai style armor, we've come out with a really unique piece and sort of being semi-authentic. I don't know how authentic I'm being, but taking inspiration from those things definitely helped in painting up this miniature and giving it its own unique style. So... I hope this has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along and paint what I'm painting here, or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. So again, thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.